In this question, we are told that O is the center of the circle and DC and AD are tangents. Always look out for that in a test because sometimes a line may look like a tangent, but always make sure that they have told you that it is a tangent in the description of the question. The first question asks us to prove that AOCD is a cyclic quadrilateral. Now remember, a cyclic quadrilateral is a shape that either touches a circle in four different areas, so like that, like that, like that, and like that. So it's a quadrilateral, which is four sides, and it touches the circle at each of its four corners, or it is a shape that does this, where the opposite angles so for example, that's 50 and that's 130, they should add up to 180. Notice the circle does not need to be there. Or you might get the following. The exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. Or you may get this kind of bow tie effect happening where this angle is 60 degrees and this angle is 60 degrees. Now that only happens that is a property of circles. And so if you ever see that happening in a shape, then you can say that it's a cyclic quadrilateral. So there are four main ways. First way is the most obvious if it touches the circle in four places. The second way is that the opposite sides add up to 180. The third way is that the exterior angle is equal to the interior opposite angle. And the fourth one is if you get the bow tie effect happening like that. So that green cyclic quadrilateral is clearly not a cyclic quadrilateral because of the fact that it touches a circle in four different places. We can see that's not happening. So we're going to have to look to one of the other three options. So if we had to look at this angle over here, we would be able to say that, so that's going to be angle O, A, D. Well, what would that equal? Because it is the angle that is formed between OA, which is a radius, and AD, which is a tangent. Now remember we said that a radius and a tangent always form an angle of 90 degrees. If, you, if that doesn't make sense to you, then you need to watch the video on the tangent radius theorem. And so the reason for that is the tan rad theorem. Then, if we look up at the top over here to this angle over here, we have the same effect happening where OC is a radius and DC is a tangent. And so we can say angle OCD is equal to 90 degrees for the exact same reason. We have a tangent and a radius, so it's the tan rad theorem. So what would that angle C that we just found and angle A that we just found, what would they add up to if you had to add them together? Well, they would add up to 180. They are also the opposite angles of that cyclic quadrilateral because O is opposite D and A is opposite C. And so the opposite angles are adding up to 180. You don't need to go and check O and D as well. You only need it to happen once. And so A so angle A and angle C add up to 180, and so we can say that that shape is a cyclic quadrilateral. So we can say, therefore, AOCD is a cyclic quad. And the reason for that, and the reason for that will be that the opposite angles of a cyclic, oh, cyclic quad. Now, I must mention, that your teacher might write the word converse over here. What that means is the following. Normally, we are given a cyclic quadrilateral and we know that it's a cyclic quadrilateral and then they ask us to prove something with the angles. So for example, we would then say that O1 is equal to 130, for example, because if it's a cyclic quadrilateral, then the opposite angles add up to 180. But in this example, we did it in the opposite way. We were given the angles and we showed that they add up to 180. And so because of that, we say that it's a cyclic quadrilateral. You see, so they gave us the angles first, then we say it's a cyclic quadrilateral. Whereas the normal way is to know it's a cyclic quadrilateral and then prove the angles. So whenever that happens in maths, whenever we do the opposite, we must use the word converse. Converse means 
the other way around in maths. Not all teachers do it, but if your teacher does, that's what it means. So now we know that that is a cyclic quadrilateral, and so you can use that fact for the rest of the question. The second question asks us to determine angle B, which is over here. So because, it's a, because that green one is a cyclic quadrilateral, we can say that angle O1 is 130 degrees. Why? Because the opposite angles of a cyclic quad. We know that they should add up to 180. So your teacher might, some teachers also add the word supplementary over there. Supplementary just means adds up to 180. Okay. So we know that O1 is 130 degrees. Now, how does O1 and angle B relate to each other? Well, if we look at O1, let's see which letters forms O1. So if we start at O and we just work our way backwards until the edge, we get to C and we would also get to A. And so it means that AC forms O1. Now let's go from A along some different line and let's see if we get where we get to. We get to B and we get, if we go from C, we also get to B. And so they B and O1, they both come from the same chord. Well, that chord isn't there. It would have been AC, but you can still imagine it, that it's there. And so remember, we said that when this happens, O1 is going to be double angle B. If you don't understand what's going on here, you need to watch the video on angle at the center. And so we can say that angle B will be, it's going to be half of 130, which is 65 degrees. And that's due to the angle at the center equals to two times the angle at the circumference. And we said that both angles should be on the same side of segment AC. Or so let's just look at the chord AC. And we can see that both angles are on the same side of the dotted line. And so we can use that theorem over there. So angle B is 65.